Hi guys, I'm a forester here. Today I'm going to show you a watch that you probably have never seen before. In fact, it's a watch that you've likely never even heard of before. I'd never heard of it before my last trip to China this spring. The brand name is right here on the packaging materials. I pronounce it Ebor, but I can't guarantee that that's the correct Chinese pronunciation. The Ebor factory is in Shenzhen, China, and that's just inland from Hong Kong. Although this watch is made for the domestic Chinese market, the name isn't Chinese. It's an acronym made by the first letter of several words. The E stands for everlasting, B for brand, O for outstanding innovation, H for honest team, and R for reliable products. So why would a watch made for the Chinese market have an English acronym for a name? Well, the only reason I can figure is because they value American products. It's common to even see them have American slogans on their hats and shirts. Well, let's get it out of the packaging and take a look at it. And Ebor does have nice packaging with even a personalized bag. Here's the box and it comes with this sleeve that protects the, the actual box. The box has quality construction and displays the watch well on a large pillow. Let me see if I can give you a nice close-up view of the watch. This watch is called the Ebor Diamonds Automatic. It's model number 10270417. It's a mechanical watch, my second mechanical wrist watch. The overall appearance of the watch comes from the name Diamonds Automatic. This watch is made for the sunlight. All parts have a mirror polish and glisten in the sun. The bezel is made from tungsten and has been cut into facets that reflect light like a diamond. That's why I'm making this video outside. The downside to the mirror polish is that it shows fingerprints and scratches, but that hasn't stopped me from wearing this watch almost constantly since buying it about a month ago. I wouldn't say that I prefer this showy look, but it does add some variety to my watch collection. Along with the appearance, accuracy is of equal importance to me in a watch. I wouldn't own a watch that I didn't like the looks of, and I wouldn't own a watch that didn't keep good time. Now I set the Ebor to the atomic clock a couple of days ago, so let's have a look and see how it's doing. And looking at the atomic clock, the time is 8.51.14. Now this is a non-hacking watch, so you have to go by the minute hand. Since I couldn't stop the second hand, I wasn't able to set it down to the second. That was a bummer, but I've gotten used to it. When I was a kid, I used to set my watch by the school clock or else by a bank phone number and get the time from them. We weren't able to set time down to the second by the atomic clock then, so in that regard, this is a throwback to a simpler time. In any case, after a couple of days, the Ebor is keeping excellent time. I know where the second hand was when I set it, and it's only lost 10 seconds or so in two days. That's pretty good. The face of the watch is very attractive. I'll give you a close-up so you can see the detail. It's a very clean look. The second and minute hands are slender and have some luminescence on them. It isn't effective though and could have been left off. The second hand has the Ebor logo on it. It's printed on the face also above the name at the top of the watch face. The patterns on the face of the watch aren't obvious but they add a touch of class. There are small jewels at the 12, 6, and 9 positions to go along with the diamond theme. Now at the price point of this watch, I doubt that they're real diamonds. And speaking of price, it was 1,580 RMB right there, which roughly equates to $260. I did get a receipt and a warranty, by the way. Here's the warranty. I hope I never have to use that warranty though. You probably have noticed something different about the day date feature on the watch. Yes, the day is a Chinese abbreviation for Monday. 
I'll switch it back to English after making this video. It does have a sapphire crystal and should resist scratching. Now let's move on to the bracelet and the back of the watch. The watch has a display back. It has a Miyota movement from Japan. I believe it's the same movement as used in many citizen watches. Now on the back you can see the name and logo of the company and the model number of the watch. It has a stainless steel case and band and it's water resistant down to 50 meters. The clasp has tabs on both sides. I hope you can see right there. And it fits over a center post. The only adjustment that I've made to this band is to move the pin up on the clasp one notch right there. I'll put it on and let you see how it looks on my wrist. Here's what it looks like on my wrist. I think it fits me well and I'd say that I have larger than normal wrist. The case diameter is 42 millimeters. The height of the case is 11 millimeters. Now the band's a little loose but I prefer it that way. One of my goals in buying this watch was to have a unique watch that isn't commonly available in the U.S. I doubt you'll see this watch in your local store or even on Amazon or eBay. It is a common watch in China though, where Ebor has around 25% of the market. It's marketed as a fashionable watch for Chinese businessmen. I like my Ebor. It's a good looking watch that keeps excellent time. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Y'all take care.